Testament reading comes from Romans 15th chapter, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There seems to exist a great disparity between hope and history. And this is especially true when we consider the ways many of great cities in the United States, including our own, the Big Apple, trashes their elderly poor. How high-rise management, apartment management hires people to sometimes break down the doors and push away their furniture in order to drive them out of the throwaway people who often occupies a very tiny single room occupancy. The challenge we face today is how are we to be hopeful when we learn that the wealth inequality in the United States grow further and further apart? When the top 1% of the population owns 43% of wealth and the next the top 19% of Americans owning 50%. And the bottom 80% of Americans owning only 7% of wealth. I haven't even mentioned yet about the starving millions and the horrifying tens of thousands of deaths from gun violence every year. Hope and history seemed destined never to meet and shake hands with each other. Then perhaps we should abandon the seemingly and innocently hopeful St. Paul. Maybe, maybe better to aside with the person who said, I used to be an incurable optimist, but now I'm finally cured. He said by Discouraging thought, yet I hear small voice from a distant apart. As French philosopher and theologian, Jesuit priest, Teilhard de Chardin once said, the world will belong tomorrow to those who brought it the greatest hope. The world will belong tomorrow to those who brought it the greatest hope. For what can we uh, bring to this world if not hope? If you ask me why I go to church, it is out of my deep longing. I long to see myself before God, sometimes as vulnerable and as naked as I, as I am. And I also would like to see you, friends, before God. And this town and this country before God. Earth filled with all that God originally intended in it. And my most insistent feeling is, there must be something more. I don't search for truth, wondering if it is there. I know it is there, if only I could find it. I know there is more light, if only the scales would fall from my eyes. I know there is more love, if only I could let go and finally let God in my life. I don't want PCIN to be a closed, closed door church for those interested in things only about ourselves 
and teaching amongst ourselves the Presbyterian dogmas or religious dogmas. I would like PCIN to irrigate the surrounding community with godly hope, with love, because without hope, we are all, literally speaking, hopeless <clears throat> creatures of despair. If we cannot feel something more, then we become something less. Just as if we cannot look to something above us, then we will surely sink to something below, low, low down there. So I am with both Terrier de Chardin and with St. Paul. The world will surely belong tomorrow to those people who brought it the greatest, the godly, power empowering hope to others. Rightly so, in our country we continue to look to education as a source of hope. I don't deny that. But again, the hope has to be deemed limited. For again, as our century has also demonstrated, if a little education is dangerous for the hope of the future, a great deal of education can also be dangerous. Only a PhD can build a neutron bomb. And the brightest and the best among us bring us into sometimes chaos of war, wars, and international conflicts. The moral and spiritual impulses that originally spawned institution of higher education in the U.S., like those that spawned for excellent schools all around the countries and hospitals, have, some, have somehow now diminished. Disenchanted with the secular humanism and with the radical political left. Many these days in Christianity as well as Islam, they are joining the religious far right. Our best hope, they say, lies in recapturing that old time values. It is quite a seductive belief in a chaotic world. But with old time values go old time structures of oppressive religious authority. And it was precisely the repressive dogmatism of these structures of authoritative religion that gave rise to the secular humanism and the political far left. It would be intolerable to return to the religion, religious intolerability, under which so much of mankind suffered and bled for so many years. As we see it even today in Iran, Syria, and part of China. Moreover, to demand as to fundamentalist oppressive obedience rather than voluntary and willing and joyful obedience and creative thinking is to advocate a return to the nursery rather than to a religion worthy of its name. In undogmatic caring and love, I truly believe that lies the hope of the world. It is the hope that we celebrate every Advent. As what St. Paul so clearly saw embodied in that little child, and what embodied in that little child is God's boundless love and God's undogmatic caring.
for Jews and Gentiles as well. Every Advent, I am stern at the boldness of God's thought. And as now the rich or greedy and the nations praised with power, and then as now, truth was on the scaffold, Rome upon the throne. What any one individual could do was clearly limited. And then to bring that person into the world in a place even dangerous than a rundown hotel is scarcely believable. But it's not really too hard to believe, just too good to believe we being such sometimes strangers and cynics to such godly goodness. Put yourself in God's place. What were the choices? What else would you bring hope into this world except through a person of Jesus Christ? How else would you make a statement of our love except through a person of Jesus Christ who lived and embodied and living love in the history. And if you were God, how else would you disarm the power crazed nations except by becoming yourself as disarming as a little child, as an infant Jesus? There is not strength in weakness. But what strength is there in a clearly a voluntary renunciation of this awesome power? Isn't that the godlike restraint the superpowers need today to understand and learn to emulate? Just to think. A little by little renunciation of coercive power in order to defeat the great enemy of our days, which we call distrust. A little by little renunciation of our selfish ego and interest in order to overcome the mere fear with faith. How else do you make a person trustworthy except by trusting her or him? It's a risk to trust strangers and even more dangerous to trust enemies, but not a great risk, not compared to the risk God took in trusting all of us to respond to God's voluntary renunciation. Of power, to God's undogmatic caring and love. And that perhaps is the most hopeful thing that we can say about perhaps human race, that God, our God, is still willing to trust us, knowing that Christ today is real in the world, through the bodies of ordinary men and women just like us, who are his no more than a voice in the wind. The Incarnation says as much about what we are to become as it does about what God has become. Shall we then not be hopeful? There is more truth and we can find it. There is more light, and we can see it. There is more love, and we can bring it everywhere around us. For that is what the Holy Spirit is here with us and to help us. We can bring more love to our home. We can bring more love to our schools. For even though I understand all knowledge and all mystery, but have not love, I am nothing. We can bring love to dedicated social reformers and even revolutionaries 
For even though I gave away all that I have and give my body to be burned, the very stuff of heroism, but I have not love, I gain nothing. And to the radical, radical religious right, what can we say if not that the integrity of godly love is more important than keeping the purity of dogma. The Advent hope is that love, the long distance runner, will outlast all competitors. The Advent hope is that love will never die, not with God, and therefore I dare to say, not with us. Let the nations raise, the kingdom totters, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. So we shout, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen.